What's up, everyone? MCI EDP Studios. Welcome to the Mixing It Up podcast, where I talk to creators who inspire me and also are out there making moves and and doing things and uh, trying to be the best that they can be while at the same time, um, that's what we're here and that's what it's about. So today I am with Drew. Uh, How exactly do you say your name, bro? Uh, Monarch. Um, It's Monarch Entertainment, right? Monarch Music. Okay, Monarch Music. Yeah. So uh, you're a fairly new producer to the scene? Yeah, I want to say, well, since I went public with it, I've been producing since I was about 15. Okay. I was in school band since I was 11, so it's always been on my radar. Just didn't put the energy into it that I wanted to put into it till my senior year of high school, I want to say. Okay. So, All right. yeah, so I've been doing it for a while, just just now going pretty public with it okay cool so how, how exactly did you get started then i mean what made you want to produce and so my sophomore year of high school um i was in a hip-hop jazz collective uh named mosaic with about four of my close friends um and it was all original music the guy that put it together it was all his songs we were playing live instruments while rapping uh, we went to West Michigan Student Showcase, won third place there. And like when I got on that stage, that's when I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. this is what I want to do. Right. And like from then, it's just been getting into that lifestyle and working to be something bigger. Cool. Uh, so when you said you guys were playing instruments, you played instruments then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I um, started school band in sixth grade. Um, been a percussionist my whole life. Oh, so, dope. Okay. Yeah. So the, the drums come naturally for oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the rhythm and all the yes. rudiments and all that. Um, yeah, so I come from a background of playing in bands and playing real technical metal. So when my transition over producer was kind of over analytical and I kind of cluttered up my beats a lot with all this yeah. stuff because I was trying to make all this crazy stuff because I come from this technical metal background. So you're trying to jam all these right. notes. So how did you find that when you're producing uh, a challenge then maybe for you? Because you know all the technical part and the rudiments and all those kind of things or? Yeah, I find that um, I used to get to sometimes, I don't want to say uh, too complicated because I feel like certain songs deserve that extra layer of attention and musicality when you really want to make something that's original and completely yeah. you. But other times, say I'm, you know, making a, a beat for somebody. They, they, a lot of people want their stuff simple. Like, yeah. a lot of artists that I come in contact with are like, yo, like, you're doing too much. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll simplify it for you. But well, when it comes to that, I've realized, like, the way I make certain music, I've just got to use that for my own music, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then keep different types of beats for different types of people yeah i mean that's that's something to recognize as a producer you got to give you know the artist room to work yeah and uh coming from a like i said like a metal background or over analytical or technical background that can go by the wayside because you're like oh if i jam all these things in into it it's going to sound awesome and it does but if there's no room for the rapper to rap over it yeah you know, it's like, exactly. so you almost, when you're making a beat, I don't know how you do it, but anymore when I'm making a beat, as long as it's a bopper and I feel like that I could, I could rap over it or feel the flow over it. Yeah. Like that's kind of the key. You know, you gotta. Yeah. You have uh, to be able to hear somebody on it. Yeah, exactly. Cause when you're just producing to produce, you like have all these instruments and I can do all these tricks and all that, but a lot of time that, that don't even matter. So. Right. But I think it's important to keep that because that's still your creativity and like that's how you express yourself you always are going to need those i can't even call them beats because i feel like when you make real musical beats they become songs by themselves you know sometimes yeah. they don't even need lyrics yeah yeah that makes sense for sure it's always nice to have those skills in your back pocket you know oh yeah so that's a good perspective and a good way to look at it so so you got started uh the uh the school band that thing you so how did you get introduced to like recording so what did you start recording stuff is that where you learned some of the programs and stuff like that um, um like fl like because you use the fl to make beats right 
Yeah, I currently use FL. Okay. Started on Logic Pro X um, because, again, with the with Mosaic, that's the program my friend was working with that was running the group. So he was like, yo, if you want to get into producing and recording music, Logic. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I took that. Um, and really, I didn't start recording music until I was about, until I was 18, I think. Just because, what, me and my, I have a, a group of friends, um, two of them have a clothing clothing brand named Blank Mob, Okay. and then the rest of them are just a lot of creative guys like me, so we kind of came together as this big collective uh, called Hound Set, and, um, which we're kind of spaced out right now, all working on our own things, but it's still, you know. Still yeah. locked in. Right, yeah. But those guys are like, yo, like, let's make some music. And I was like, well, I've been wanting to do this anyways. I got the microphone and stuff. I just haven't touched it. And boom, from there, I've been a recording engineer and producer, <laughs> you know? Nice, nice. So we talked a little bit before the podcast started, and I had said this before on the podcast. And I uh, I have I got a crew of guys that I work with, yeah. right? So... I kind of keep it tight. I've had other people hit me up, and sometimes it's worked out. Sometimes it hasn't as far as just straight recording. For me, most of the stuff, like when I record people, it's because I want them to rap on my beats because yeah. I want to produce it from the ground up. So that's that's kind of the basis that I start on. Yeah, I'll record you, but we got to fuck with my beats, right? Yeah. So um, where I'm going with that is uh, so we talked a little bit before about you recording mm -hmm. uh general public but then you said you might go a different route so do you record people or like are you like yeah. willing to do that you know for some bread or whatever you know because i have a lot of people that hit me up all the time and they was like can you point me in the right direction and i'm just like yeah i can you know i have a few options but then some people are like they don't really do it much either so you know to have somebody to actually do that so I guess the things that have like turned me off towards recording towards the public, um, well, not even necessarily turn me off. You know, I'm 20 years old. Mm. I try my best to be available for things like that, but life is life at the end of the day. Right. You know, yeah. it gets tough. Mm -hmm. Things get clouded up, and I get busy. And so then it's like, man, I could be over here making making money doing these sessions, but. That's the hard part right there because it's like it's never – the music has never really been about the money for me. It's been about the music. It's been about the message and what I can bring to the creative world, you know? Yeah. So just very recently I've been having that conflict with do I want to keep running sessions? And then my, you know, living situation isn't the best for sessions right now either. Right. So yeah. even in right now it's like I could just take a break and wait until I have a better situation with that. But – then that slows up, but I don't think I would fall off the map because I'm still posting stuff all the time. Right? You know? Yeah, so. yeah. You're still out there uh, hustling and moving and, and and grinding. So, yeah, that, that's just the reason why I ask. You know, uh, there comes a time where it's like, do you want to be an audio engineer? For me, the producing is the best part, especially oh, yeah. the song from the ground up. Instead of uh, just hey, here's a YouTube beat that I'm recording over. You, recording right. you over and like trying to mix it out or whatever and that's something i've gotten better at over the years and everything too is is being able to be a better engineer and get yeah. better mixes you know even over the last three years but that's still not my end goal you know and even you know, at first i didn't have fun with it i hated engineering because i didn't know what i was doing mm. but when i started learning and figuring out how to make things sound more professional and sound clear and like whoa like it sounds like a song like it's fun like yo i can do this to somebody's voice you know like so that got me more into actually liking to engineer but you know from the get-go it was always i wanted to make my own music i do have my own music i got a whole mixtape i just recorded but it's not released yet <laughs> you know so so are you do you rap too then is that what yeah oh, i okay. mean and even then i don't want to just call myself a rapper because i make all types of different music yeah. I feel like I'd just like to label myself as an artist, you okay. know? Fair enough. Yeah. So what are some, uh, I know you said that 
your living situation isn't the best and that's totally you know when you're 20 years old and trying to figure things out but the the biggest thing as i can tell you is you know consistency and just keeping that going sometimes where i look at the engineering thing is like you have to rely on other people but mm -hmm. when you're sitting there making beats you can post it to beat stars you can yeah. promote it on instagram you can talk to rappers there's like a lot of things you can do by yeah. yourself that you don't need other people so is that what you're thinking about focusing on is that and building your brand and those kind yeah, of things because that that's where i started you know that's 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 what i've been doing i've been on instagram since i was 13 so i have a following just based on being on instagram for so long and like the more and more i post my music the more and more people i don't know dm me and yo like send me some beats like we can collab over the internet i've i've met there's a whole list of people in my DM on Instagram that I haven't worked with yet simply based on situation, yeah. you know? Yeah. And time, too. You yeah. can't work with everybody. You know, right. I get that a lot. Yeah, that, you too. Know? I get hit up a lot for things, and I got to... And I'm trying to even get better at saying no to a lot of things because I got to protect my time, you know, yeah. especially because I'm twice your age. And like I said, I kind of got late to the producing game, so... Since 17 is probably when I first started taking it seriously. I've mm -hmm. always made beats and I've always worked with rappers. I rap myself, been on stage yeah. doing hip hop shows and metal shows and stuff. But uh, really, over the since about 17 is when I really was like, I wanted to do something with producing and making beats and everything and taking it serious. So, talking about consistency, like, what what does your schedule look like as far as making music? Like, I know you said you have your mixtape, but like, as far as making beats for artists and just making beats to sell. I know you said you got a beat stars coming out, right? Yeah. Pretty soon. Yeah. And that's just gonna be monarch music. Yeah. Is monarch that what music. Be? Okay, cool. So what what does that look like for you? What you know, how do you stay consistent making beats and do you got a routine that you stick to or Yeah, so um I pretty much if I'm not making a beat that day, I'm in somebody else's studio at a different location recording music, recording a verse making a beat there and their studio, you know. It's so if I'm not making one at home, I'm making something. It's not always a beat, it might just be a regular song or I might have multiple sessions lined up in that day to where I'll go record over here, I'll go be engineer over here, I'll go produce over here, you right. know. So it's it's every day, at least at least one beat a day. Yeah, right. But I mean, I'll sit down at my computer when I get off work and push out four beats in five hours overnight yeah. just because i can't sleep okay. so i think the consistency is definitely there it's yeah. just the up i gotta upload everything yep yeah. yeah. i've gotten to the schedule this month where like i want to upload i used to upload like three times a week and then i i haven't been consistent with it because i'm the same way i'm shooting a video doing a podcast like almost doing too many things you know so uh but that's what i like to do you know i yeah. like to do multiple things and stay busy so but this month I've been posting a beat almost every single day. I missed like one day so far, but I'm gonna try to keep that schedule up as long as I can go. That way, it just keeps me consistent with making right. at least one beat a day, and it's got to be a banger too, you know, because I ain't just putting on any old ass beat that I make. Oh, you know? definitely. So, I have noticed though, once I've been consistent and kind of found my own sound, is like I make a lot less and less beats that I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna use that. A lot of times it's more like I just make the beat. And I'm like, all right, that's dope. So. Do you use loops? Do you create your own, or it just depends? Or use MIDI? How does that work? All for of you? it. Yeah. Most of the time, um, it's from scratch, because I like my own sound. Yeah. You know, and I'm still developing. I'm still developing the sounds where you can be like, "Yo, that's Monarch. Monarch produced that beat." Like, gotcha. I'm still developing yeah. that sound, but I'm definitely like getting closer and closer every time I make something. But, you know, I'll use the loops. I'll use a uh, MIDI file pack. You know, we can drag yeah. the MIDI on. So yeah. I'll use that. Just All that's for creativity, you know, yeah. just to give me an idea to start off with. Because when I make five, ten from scratch beats in a row, I'm like, oh, I don't really got that much left up here right. for the creativity. Yeah. I got to, something's got to break so I can move on and, and add something else to this, you right. know? So See, it really I, depends. I, I, I was in that school of thought too before where I had this pride thing where like, no, I'm going to make every melody and I'm going to do every sound, you know, try to do the sound programming for it or mm -hmm. I'm not just going to use a preset. And then I found out how much time that takes to sit there and oh, try to yeah. make a melody all the time. And then I've also grown from, 
I can make five beats in the time of, with a loop or a MIDI, like real quick in the time that I could take you know, like one or two me making the melody. Sometimes it come right out, but sometimes you're sitting there, you know, yeah. switch them all the time, trying to change it. Oh, is that too basic? Did I do that before? So that's why I like loops and MIDI because you can kind of drag those in. Of course, with the MIDI, you always change it and do what you feel with it, you know, oh, and yeah. that's why it's there, you know, but I've, I've come fr from a different school of thought where I use what you have. It's all there for right. for the use, you know, and that kind of makes you more well-rounded too instead of just being, because I've seen other producers too, oh, I just make it all from scratch. Well, I was the same way, but I feel like being able to use those as tools definitely helps your creativity too because then you compare your melodies to something you've heard that was really right. dope and you're like, okay, I need to switch my shit up a little bit, you know. Do you find that too? Um, yeah, like when I when listening to something else and be like, oh, yeah. Um, and then with the... With the loops, like, I want to say a couple months ago is when I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's okay to use these, you know? Yeah. Like, it hasn't always, for a minute, it was like, no, nah, I don't want to use loops because I want it to be all for me. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, they're all, it, you got to use everything you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've learned a lot just from listening to other people's melodies and just adding things to them or like dragging a MIDI in and being like, oh, that's an interesting way to yeah. do it. So then when you go to make one next time, you can take a little bit of something from that, you know. So I feel like it helps more than it hinders, whereas before it was more of a pride thing anyway. Like, Definitely. oh, fuck that. Ain't. <laughs> Definitely. That's it's it's, always, ain't my it's shit, just you know? been a pride thing, man. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we all know about pride and that ego shit. It just gets in your way, you know. Definitely. So. So is your focus more on so when you say it's just it's monarch music right mm -hmm. that's your brand that's that's the beats yeah that's, that's you as an artist as well as an artist when I when I make a song and I release it it just says it's just monarch like monarch music is just the umbrella okay term for anything gotcha. I do but if it's something I created it's probably it would just say monarch okay yeah. dope so do you have anything out right now streaming or anything right now as an artist do but <laughs> it's old soundcloud music from when i started okay and with that whole path i was getting on i was hopping on tight beats just having fun with it but mm. from the get-go i wanted it to be more serious and be something new and i feel like the game needs a new sound i feel, I feel like the whole industry needs a new sound it's 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 been really repetitive and um so I basically got caught listening to that music and I was like, yo, this isn't the message I want to portray. I'm mm -hmm. not really saying anything that's real to me. I'm just rapping. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm just yeah. just making a song. Um so with that I took a whole year off of rapping basically to focus on my producing so that I could produce my own music. Oh, dope. That's super cool, man. So I just now very recently started to get back into lyrics. Okay. You know? Cool. So, so what yeah. is your end goal then? And to be an artist or be a producer? An artist. Okay. So that is your that is your main goal then? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just... Because me playing in bands and being an artist as well, like I have actually went the other way where it's like I'm putting the... Uh, the artistry on the back burner and if i do it i do it you know i, I jam yeah. with some guys in a band a couple times a week or like once a week or whatever but i just like the producing and, and like making things up you know from the ground up so the artistry kind of took a back seat for me whereas the producing kind of came forefront so you're just going to be monarch and mm -hmm. that and, and then produce as you as you go type shit. yeah so basically i i look at it all as i look at the whole engineering producing and being an artist all is the same thing for me because if i know how to do it all for myself why not right you know and yeah. a lot of uh the people i work with and my closer friends that don't really have the attention in muskegon or outside of Mus i mean i don't want to even say outside of muskegon because i know a lot of guys that have a lot of attention outside of muskegon and, and they're so worried about having attention here right and i'm like you guys don't see what you got right now. Right. But a lot of those guys are the same way as me. Like, I know multiple people that produce and record their own music. And these kids are young, like 16 through 19. Like, yeah. So they really inspired me to do that, too. I want to say they're all on the same 
We're all on the same wavelength. Yeah. All trying to get this new sound and be artists. Right. <laughs> I think that's a, a dope advantage for you being so young too. And that's kind of what drew me to you and wanted to have you on the podcast because like I said, you know, I'm basically twice your age. So even though I haven't been producing that long, it's cool to see a, a someone young, someone that's hungry and someone that like, if I could tell you one thing is just, cons- you know, stay consistent and learn every day, you oh, know? Yeah. So by the time you're 25, you know, cause this is a long, long game, you know? So by the time you're 25, you're going to be like, yeah, I stay consistent. This is what I'm passionate about. You know, you're not out doing fuck shit and doing some weird shit, like, right. you know, getting in trouble and doing whatever. Just focus on the music. And and that kind of brings, you know, some light and positivity to me. So thank you for that. That's dope, yeah, man. Course, I, man. I like to see you, see you out there pushing and grinding. And a lot of people would be like, oh, well, you're a producer. He's a producer. Like, wouldn't that be competition, you know? And it's like, no, I don't think like that. I think there's yeah. abundance in the world for everybody. So I feel like if I can teach or if I can learn, vice versa, that's how right. any relationship can work, you you know, so my thing is, we're all still in Muskegon. Why right. be in competition? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I from day one. Anytime I meet a person, I try to be friendly. I try to open up, and have a, just like this, we're having a conversation. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, I've gotten in the studio with people that like that competition. And it's like. You're missing the mark, bro. Right. That's not what this is about. Yeah. It's not. It's not what music is about. Music is the universal language. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's so much deeper than I rap better than you. Yeah. <laughs> that means a lot to some people, though. I know, know, but the problem is a lot of times the guy that say that probably don't. You know, that's what probably... <laughs> <laughs> they're probably not the guy that should be saying that. So. So you're just getting started in your journey, you know, and a lot of people that I talk, did you have something? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, and the ones that don't are the ones that probably should be saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, I hear you. They're humble, but they know better, you yeah. know, so, you know, a lot of people that I have on here are, you know, people that are, like I said, making moves, inspiring me and stuff. I know you don't have a lot of stuff out, and you kind of told me some plans of some stuff coming out. So what are some recent moves that you're taking to kind of push the Monarch brand or even, um, you know, Monarch music or even Monarch the artist forward? Like kind of what is your some of your next steps then, you know, so, as far as releasing or some things that you're going to do? Um, right now, my mixtape with Stay Sunny is getting the final master and final mix. Um, we have three music videos to shoot within the next month. We really want to drop a video and drop a single and then drop the whole mixtape. Um you produced that whole thing? You did the whole I thing? I did not produce any oh. of it actually. It was all It was your beats though? It wasn't my beats. Oh, okay. But so you engineered it for? Him? Yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. Um we both kind of we both kind of did the engineering, did the recording like it cuz we both know how to do it. But it was uh that's why it's a mixtape. Because we just picked a bunch of beats and we're like, and I was like, you know, I want to get into recording again. And like, it's not, I don't feel like it's going to hurt me because for, like from not using my beats, because um, I just had fun making it, man. And like, I actually said some things I really wanted to say on those songs. And I'm like, I'm proud of the time and the effort that got put into it. Dope. And, you know having a mixtape with somebody else is still more exposure for me, regardless on whether it's my beats or not. Right. Um, yeah. But I've been working on a solo, like, introduction album slash mixtape for about the past two years. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, and now it feels like it's finally, like, getting closer and closer to coming into fruition. And I really want to have that. I don't want necessarily want to put a date on it but i'm shooting for my birthday which is in may okay what day may 29th oh nice my birthday is may 17th so. dope dope <laughs> <laughs> um so you're shooting for uh that would be spring late spring early summer yeah, kind of right thing. right yeah. right before the summer yeah definitely you. got some summer bops on there nice so. nice <laughs> so what are what are you uh so that's kind of what you're working on right now so as you progress and, um, you know, you've said you've been doing music since, what'd you say, 16? 
uh, started producing when I was 15. Okay. I was in... When you were doing the school thing. Yeah, right? I was yeah. in band from 11 to college. Okay. You know, I was cool. in college. At and, and you're 20 now. You'll be 21 this year? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what are some things that you've learned so far that uh, you kind of wish you knew when you started when you was 15? Or some things that... See, it's a little different for you because your mind is developing still, you know, and you can absorb a lot and take a lot in yeah. and, and like be able to use all the technologies and all the different avenues as far as the social media is and learn all the promotion, which I think is super dope. But what are some things that you, you know, even know today that maybe you could have told yourself when you was 15, if you really wanted to take this shit seriously, you know? Um, the main thing, basically the only thing I would have told myself because I mean, I've learned a lot from other people, and I know I would have ended up in those situations still and right. learned the same things. Yeah. But the main thing I would have told myself would have been to make music my main focus at that time. I'd be a lot farther. Yeah. But time comes when your time comes, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. No, nobody's journey yeah. is the same, you know, everybody's journey is a little bit different, you know, and that's the thing about me being older, sometimes I look at it, and I'm like, should I really still be doing this music thing, but I love to do it, and why do I care what anybody else thinks, because it's right. only about what I think, right, so, like, I feel like I'm just starting to get good, like, I feel like over the last six to eight months, myself, even though I've been producing for three years, it's taken me this far, and this much education on my own skill set to learn exactly what I'm doing now. You know, and oh, so yeah. each day I try to get better as well, you know, so I just feel like it's a never ending progression. So you can't really put a number or a time on it. No. You know, I just I think that's dope for you because you got time on your side, too. You know, you got Definitely. but you also got to navigate this crazy world of all these things changing all the time, too. So that's one thing I've noticed. You know, you really have to be able to adapt, you know, because the next thing you know, you're using loops and midis and in this VST and this and this. And now we're doing one shots and and that we're doing this social media. So those are things that you're going to just have to continue to navigate all the time, oh, yeah. you know? So I think I have it easier with social media. Um, like just not in terms of promotion, I want, not in like terms of it's easier to get on because of social media. Right. I mean, that depends. Cause at one point I want to say you still need the talent at other points. Some people are just like, you got some money, but dude, your music sucks. Right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, um, like I was saying, with the social media aspect, I've been on social media since I was like thirteen. So, with Instagram, especially, I've been talking to people from out of the country, around the country, for years now. Um, I got a friend down in LA that hopefully I really hope to fly out there to him this summer, and because we've been trying. We've been in contact for about two or three years now, I want to say, maybe four. But he's doing his thing with the music and the clothing down there. And I'm like, yo. And we've been I'm just like, yo, we got to we gotta link up. We got to do something. And he's all about it. So I'm hoping I can uh, shoot out to L.A. with him and make some music down there, make some bangers down there and start getting my name out there. You yeah, know? networking. Yeah, that's what it's all about, you know, is... is is building that network and, and you know, because you're always like one or two people or one or two handshakes away from like the next opportunity that could, you know, be your opportunity. So going forward, is that all your your main focus is just your music then? Like right right now. That's, yeah, that's right what now. you're trying to do is build. So as an artist, producer, whatever you can get in right now, is that kind of where you're at? I know you said being an artist is your main focus, but. Yeah, for me, it's like. When I think about it, I'm not, I don't get too stressed about being like, like introducing myself as, yo, I'm a producer. Mm. I'm an artist. Yeah. It's more just like, yo, I make music. Yeah. I'm going to show you this. Right. Oh, dope. That's a dope beat, bro. Like, come make a beat for me sometime. All right, bet. Right. Or I liked your verse. You want to come rap? Bet. Right. You know, it's yeah. kind of opens up the opportunities. Yeah. Right? Um, so <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> and then uh like i said with my whole like my group of guys we do everything from photography to videography to clothing um i've had the idea of starting a magazine with them like it's a wide we, we, <laughs> we like to call ourselves renaissance men because 
it's like jack of all trades. Like we want to do everything. Right. We don't. I'm the one that is really good with the musical aspect, and then we got the two guys that run the clothing brand. They're really good with um, finding manufacturers and stuff like that. Right. You know, like we kind of got everything on the team that we need for all of us to build the way we want to build, and we all want to do it all. Yeah, because that's who I want to say myself definitely, and the rest of the group. We've all talked about this. The people that have done those things, the Odd Future, the ASAP, ASAP Mob, yeah, you know, those, strange the, music. Those two, yeah, strange music. Yeah. Um, oh, it was just on the tip of my tongue. There was another group I was going to say, but uh, if you want to go as far as saying ICP, because yeah. those guys like know how to build a fan base and know how to sell a shit ton yeah. of shirts, you know. So, but you know, the people that came in. Had their own sound and changed the culture. It's, I feel, I mean, there's definitely new sounds. The Michigan sound is very recent, I want to say, that it just, you know, like the the Flint, the Flint, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That started getting real mainstream attention. Yeah. And like, some people are like mad about that. And that kind of, at first I was like, yo, like, dang, like some of these, some of these dudes can't even rap on these beats. Mm-hmm. But then the more I listened to it and the more I started working with artists that, that did make that kind of music, I was like, no, wait, this is dope. Like, yeah. this is dope. Yeah. <laughs> this is fire. And I ended up in a studio session with somebody else, and they were just trashing it. Like, like, oh, Michigan's got way more sound than that. Like, there's so many different types of sounds here. And it's like, bro, okay, you can say that, but don't trash something else. Yeah. yeah don't no don't hate do on something else for doing that. So. Yeah. My whole point with that was like the Michigan sound was the most recent sound to really pop off, right? Yeah. But I want to say, what am I trying to say right now? <laughs> um, you know, when Out of Future came out, that was a whole different thing, and not only did it did it affect the music, it affected the clothing, it affected the way kids dressed, like. Yeah. It was a movement. I was like yeah. 13. Everybody had Odd Future socks. Right. Yeah. Vans. Yeah. You know? It was a movement. So when it comes to me and my guys, that's that's the thing we want to do is we want we want to inspire the kids to, to be something even different than that. Yeah. But, but, but through doing your own sound, your own clothing, your own music yeah. and everything. So. But it's never, it, it'll never be about hating on a different sound. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. You know? Yeah, I think that shit's ridiculous because it's all an opinion. You know, like we've spent the last my last two podcasts, we kind of talked about the the list that was going around, and then we kind of talked about you know just opinions, and everybody's gonna have one. So like, why even get caught up in that? I I've heard some Detroit rappers and or you know Michigan sound, and I think that's Rio the young OG. That's mm-hmm. the reason why it's gotten really big. You know, because he's got some popularity. But uh, you know, I've heard some really bad Detroit flint rap stuff and i've heard some really dope ass stuff you know that i've actually helped produce so it's it's kind of it's you know it's like anything there's shitty country singers and there's shitty like and there's probably ones that are really really good i'm not a huge country fan i do like some country but there are some that stand out that are really really good you know and then now with the internet you could be shitty and it doesn't matter you could still build a fan base if you're intriguing or have something cool or interesting to say or right. or just kind of fucked up cuz some people like the, like watching those kind of train wrecks you know you like the whole takashi situation and shit you know <laughs> man so, yeah, man i haven't seen one person that's been positive about him though yeah <laughs> not in a yeah. minute well he's a different kind of guy you know yeah. he's just like a he just wants all the attention, you know. He he's kind of a weirdo, but we'll leave that for a whole other podcast. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, what's next for Monarch? What's next for Monarch Music? Um, as long as everything goes right, hoping to go on tour with Stay Sunny. It's a ten day tour, um, starting April 9th. Uh, Starting in North Carolina, ending in Atlanta, um, uh, but we're just we're opening up, getting a few about like three songs I think three songs to fifteen minutes or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Pretty short set, but it's a good opportunity I feel because it's 
a lot of places outside of Muskegon that I yeah. can go perform at, you yeah. know? That's big. That's huge. Yeah. Getting out there and shaking the hands and, you know, meeting all the people that are at the shows and talking to them and being personal. You know, that's how, how you get people to be fans of your music, you know, yeah. especially when you're first starting out, you know. So, so you're going to do some shows. You're going to release this record hopefully in May, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the uh, mixtape with him is going to drop, I want to say in April or before April. We don't really have a date on it, which is a little frustrating, but it's okay. It's okay. I know it's going to come out because yeah. it's all done. Right. And he's he's working every day trying to mix and master it and get everything ready and finished so that we can actually make that move to release. But yeah, other than that, I'm working on my own solo project so that I can really, really introduce Monarch and Monarch music and show something new. Because I feel the way I do my music, um, there's not a lot of people here that do it my my way, you right? Know? And it's yeah. not. I'm not saying that in a way that it's better than anything, because that's not how I feel about it. Right. It's, you know, it, but it's just this is a new sound that would be coming to Muskegon. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody really make music like that. Yeah, you know. yeah, that's dope though. I mean, because that's accomplishing your mission and putting the music first, like you said. So. And then what about the beat store? I know you said you're working on it because if people want to get some beats from you, how are they going to get some beats from you? Yeah. Um, so I have a whole list of beats I got to upload. Uh, just need some Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's a whole, a whole home situation right now that I'm figuring out. Um, I hope to have it up before April. I want to have it up this month so that I can actually post those beats and post my links. Um and start my YouTube as well because, you know, tight beats go crazy on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, it's all been personal basis, like Facebook Messenger. Yo, yeah. can you make this kind of beat? Then I'll send it off to him. Yeah, got you. Cool, man. So uh, what's going on with the – I seen a few – so you did a little bit of thing with uh, Lotus Black. Is that what you did? Like yeah, some other content I know that you might have out there. So you did something with Lotus Black, and then I seen you with uh, Tamar Porter too. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, T Dog, Mister 1804. That's that's my big homie. He's known me since I was. I mean, he's known my parents since before I was born. Yeah. So that's that's family right there. Um, Lotus came into contact with him, and he was working with Southside Studios in Holland. Um, made a post looking for producers and artists and engineers. And I commented and told him I was looking for opportunities. And from there, uh, we've worked a lot. I haven't really spoken to him in a while for personal reasons, but um, it was dope. We did a lot of videos and yeah, I've seen interviews, a lot of videos. made a lot of beats uh, with his brother, Jay, um, dope producer. Uh, He's out of Holland, that dude? They're, they... Are here now currently, but um, yeah, I I can't. I went out to Holland for the first time to Southside Studios, and that was like the first. Well, that was the second time I've been in like a real setup studio yeah. that wasn't my own. Right. That had real monitors, like Pro Tools, Auto Tune, everything that yeah. you could think of. Right. Um, I got that's the first time I got to use Omnisphere. Oh, really? Which is dope. Yeah. I was like, yo, I've been wanting to touch this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't really uh, – might have something coming soon with him. I just haven't been in contact with him for, okay. for personal reasons. Got you, got you. So what were you doing with uh, T-Dog then? Um, shot down to Atlanta with him. To uh, We went to Shade 45. Uh party with dj tony neal and the core djs um he performed there basically brought me as a to show me like a plus one type thing. yeah gotcha. show, he's like i want to show you what like what the stuff is really about and and the places you could go i'm gonna bring you down here and uh it was dope to he, he basically was trying to pass down knowledge to the little homie you know oh, yeah. and well, that's dope man i'll definitely uh You'll see me with him again, for sure. That's dope. I like to see that because, uh, 
you know, anytime you got any questions or anything too, reach out to me, man. I'm sure I can, oh, yeah. you know. I got you. You know, anything you need, because like I said, we're all in this together, man. It's two, three, one, yeah. you know, and I would definitely be interested in getting some of your links and hearing some of your beats and stuff too, because, you know, a, a lot of people I have on, I usually have some kind of relationship with them, but sometimes I like to get the person that I ain't really never met. So I'm just meeting you right now and getting yeah. to know a little bit about you. I really you, you appreciate know, so. that. Yeah, for sure, man. So any last words, parting words? How do we check your stuff out? Anything um, else you want to say? You can find me on Instagram at Monarch Music. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a follow, too, in case I'm not ready when we're done here. All right. Appreciate that. Um, I've got a lot of snippets on my Facebook right now, um, snippets on Instagram. It's all been real teasers right now until it's out. My SoundCloud is also Monarch Music. Uh, also doesn't have any new stuff on it. But I got all these pages ready for me to post all my new stuff. Um, I want to say, look for the next two, three months for regular stuff to be dropping, regular content. Cool. And they'll be filled up pretty quick, I want to say. Awesome. So probably by the time this comes out, that's going to be a good time. So it'll probably be like two weeks before it comes out. So when they see this, and that's when you'll be starting to drop and probably stuff consistently. Oh, yeah. Consistently. Yeah. And before then, just two weeks, I'll have my beat starts for sure. So. Oh have the link and everything hell yeah you know. well uh, i really appreciate your time today man thanks a lot for coming yeah. through and i'm sure we'll sit down and speak again i just wanted to put this podcast out there and kind of put you out there so if people are interested in working with you or you know getting your name out there because you know when i was younger or i wish you know someone would you know do that for me you know so i try to do that for other people as far as like and like i said man i like seeing you work i like seeing uh, seeing what you're doing and your name keeps coming up, and I and I keep seeing that you're out there putting in work, so that inspires me to keep on going too. You know, so I appreciate that a lot, and thank you for having me. Hell yeah, man, for hey, sure. Yo, the so. uh, the OGs, big homies, really been, you know, they've been coming through for me. Hell yeah, man. That, that's the <laughs> I didn't shit. I want to say that. Yeah, that's the shit. But we all, you know, we'll see that uh, y you're hungry and you're you're ready to put in some work. So. That, oh, yeah. that's super dope man you got time on your side too but like i said we'll we'll speak again maybe we'll get together we'll do like a beat cook up in the studio or something uh, i'm dope. sure people want to see that you know yeah. we'll get together and collab with some stuff when we got a little more time but uh yeah i'd look forward to that so monarch music check them out uh instagram soundcloud those kind of things beat store coming out soon so um I feel like you're going to be a force to be reckoned with, man. Just keep on pushing it. Stay positive. You know, shit gets crazy and, oh, know. And, 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 you know, life gets in the way sometimes, but you just got to keep that why in your head and, and just keep pushing, especially before you get into, you know, are you, are you, you're not a father, are you? No. Okay. No. So, yeah, you might want to keep it that way for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Trust that, me, man. Yeah. You not know. even 21 yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't even, don't even, man. Keep working on yourself for the next five years with no responsibilities, and you can go off and just, you know, take what you want. But know that it'll take, you know, a good five to ten years to get oh, exactly definitely. where you want to get. You oh, know, it, it, it should takes time, but you could also blow up real quick. You know, to, you know, you get your movement going and get your clothing brand going and, you know, build a brand for yourself. I I think you could do a lot, even though we're from Muskegon, but you're willing to travel and go out there and network oh, yeah. and stuff. And that's super important, you know. So, but all right, man, you guys check him out. I appreciate you guys checking out the podcast. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also listen to this on all streaming platforms. And vice versa, if you're hearing this and you want to watch the video version of this, you can watch it on YouTube. I try to clean it up a little bit. I had a first one in a long time with my homie Joey Deuces, mm -hmm. and I listened to it, and I was going, uh, 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 like every two seconds because I was just flying by the seat of my pants, probably going too fast and trying to plug in all of the all of the nervous holes with us. Uh, so each time I'm trying to get better too. You know, I, I like putting these podcasts on, you know, oh, highlighting yeah. people and having good conversations and, and uh, the relationships that, the relationships that come out of that are always awesome and unique. So with that being said, much love to you guys and uh, peace to you. <laughs>